What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 2 of a story where Izuku became the Shadow Monarch. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more information. Now, let's get into part 2. Chapter 7. Welcome to the Midoriya family. One month has passed since the team of teens had started clearing dungeons, and things have been improving for the better, as they continuously racked up experience by going into E and D rank dungeons, and lately they started clearing C rank dungeons. Izuku has been leveling up much more quickly than before, and now he could confidently say that things were looking up for him. Izuku was sitting on the couch on his lap was Hei in who was enjoying her time with Izuku. Their relationship progressed quite nicely even though it was slow, but they weren't really in a rush, even though their love for each other couldn't be questioned by anyone, and at this point they knew that they had a future together. The day was Saturday which was the last day before they all returned to their middle school, although for Hay and online courses were more than enough for her. She felt quite uncomfortable around others, especially males, and her mana smell ability made most of those around her stink, so she didn't see a point in staying there for an entire day. Ike on the other hand was lounging on the couch sleeping out of boredom, although he was covered by a lot of playing cards, as sitting in front of him was Jong-in, who had his legs crossed in his right hand, was a pack of playing cards, in which he would throw one at Beak showing precision in his aim. They were interrupted when the door opened revealing none other than the chairman himself Go gun -E, who was smiling, realizing who was at the door they all stood up on their feet bowing to the man in respect, ignoring Beak who was still soundly asleep. Good morning sir said Jong-in politely as the man walked inside followed by Jinchil who was looking around before his eyes fell onto Beak. Please wake him up. Said Jinchil as Izuku chose to wake the boy up instead of Jong-in, because it will undoubtedly start a fight which they couldn't afford to display in front of the chairman. Huh, another dungeon clearing. Came the voice of Beak who was waking up realizing that he was pretty much drowned in playing cards. He would have started a fight with Jong-in if it weren't that he saw the chairman himself, as he properly stood up and bowed to the man, good morning sir. Said Beak politely. It's fine, no need to be tense now, please all of you sit down said Gunny, as everyone took a proper seat in front of the man who had a proud smile on his face. I would like to first say that you all made Japan and me proud of your dedication towards your new profession as hunters. It has been a difficult childhood for all of you, but all of you persevered and still held loyalty to Japan, and now a month ago you all took your first step into protecting Japan by clearing dungeons, and all of you displayed dedication and courage. Said Gunny as the teens smiled proudly of themselves and their achievements. Gunny then looked at Jinchil and gave him a nod as the man took his phone and typed something which resulted in notification to appear on all of their phones, of course just like we said previously when you all accepted your profession, is that you will be given a salary for your services, said Gunny, as they all pulled their phones checking their bank account, and to their surprise, there was 5 million yen. Hey in choked sir, isn't 5 million yen a little bit much? Said Hei in shock beyond belief as she stared at the six zeros as the man simply gave a hearty chuckle. Not really, you see those mana crystals that could be found in the dungeon, cost a crazy amount of money which costs millions if not billions of yen, and some of the runes that you all pick from defeating dungeon boss are expensive in its own right. Said Gunny as he saw Izuku regain his bearings much quicker than the rest. Should I assume that our ranks played a factor in our salary? Asked Izuku as he looked at the chairman who simply smiled. For the moment no, all of you shared the same salary because you all worked together as a team, so we couldn't favor someone over the other, but after a few months ranks will definitely play a role in your salary, said Gunny as everyone nodded their heads. You should all learn how to manage your money and don't blow it all away. Said Jinchil as he didn't want them to get way over their heads and blow it away on useless things. Izuku shaked his head. I'm not really a materialistic person, so I doubt I will ever use all the money, but I've already had a plan on how I could spend my money which is quirkless orphanage. Get my mom to stop working extra shifts, it would be even better if she stopped completely and took more care of her health, as for my sister, I will probably pay for her tuition, since she want to become a hero and join UA, the rest will be left and build them up to buy a two-story house, so mom could enjoy a comfortable life. Said Izuku as Gunny couldn't help the smile that spread on his aged face, even Jinchil was relieved that even with all the money he was thinking about his family. I also have a plan on how to spend my money. I could definitely donate money so quirkless children could get proper education so they could one day be part of society and be able to better contribute to its development. I could also start buying a few alcohol, considering that my grandfather is into the old type of alcohol, and my grandmother could definitely enjoy new furniture, and later I could have them go on a vacation and enjoy their retirement to the fullest. Said Jong-in as Jinchil nodded and Gunny smiled. 
I really had a comfortable life considering my father was a former hero, so I could really donate this money into giving quirkless children combat classes to prepare them for the future, because eventually they will either become a hero or hunters or just simple workers in the government which is fine either way. This money will also help me become independent and prove to my father that I am growing and that he doesn't have to worry about me anymore. Said Beak as Jinchul nodded and Gunny smiled. To be honest, I don't really have family member I only had myself to take care of, so I was really confused on what to do, but Izuku-kun told me that I could donate a portion of the money to make swordsmanship popular again, because it's an art that is quickly being forgotten because of quirk, and this could also help those who one day plan to become hunters or heroes. Said hey and quite happy that she could contribute as well as Gunny smiled proudly. I'm really glad to hear that, I am also glad that the next generation are so open-minded and could one day fix the mistakes done by those ignorant fools who discriminated against others and labeled people's worth by their quirk. Said Gunny as he turned around ready to leave. I will be honest, I had my doubts about the four of you at the beginning. I didn't really trust that a bunch of teenagers could understand the weight of the world, but I guess Chairman was right about the four of you. I look forward to seeing you grow to become splendid hunters. Said Jinchul as he bowed to them in respect before he followed behind the chairman. After Chairman Go Gunny and Wu Jinchul left the teens, Beak cheered loudly, that's crazy man, 5 million yen already. Said Beak excitedly as the others smiled. It was obviously a milestone for them. Receiving our first salary just means that we all grew up. Said Jong in as being around his grandparents he was taught the importance of money and things that this generation and previous generation had neglected to learn. Even though we doubt we would ever have the need to buy a lot of things we definitely earned this, we all work together to achieve a shared goal, and that is to contribute to society, we just need to help the others who are in need and never forget where we started from. Continued Zhang in as the others nodded it was obvious that most heroes nowadays have started at the bottom and climbed quickly the rank once they became popular and rich, they started to discriminate against those who are beneath them, forgetting that they were also in a similar position. Beak smiled sincerely, I agree with you, this just means that I get to finally become independent, that I no longer have to depend on my father's salary after all. I heard one person say once, you receive your first paycheck, you've earned the rights of passage to become a man of a house, and I intend to make my father proud. Said Beak with determination blazing in his eyes. We've all come so far together, and it's time that we get to enjoy the reward for our efforts, said Hei in as the others couldn't help but nod their heads. Jong In was the first to excuse himself as he left the gymnasium followed shortly by Beak, leaving only Izuku and Hei In. Hei In why don't you come with me to meet my mom and sister? Asked Izuku not really wanting to force her into this. Hei In looked at Izuku in shock before she started to fidget with her fingers, are you sure I wouldn't be a bother? Asked Hei In, feeling uncomfortable. Don't worry my mom is a very understanding and kind person. Besides, it's about time my mom gets to know you. Said Izuku as he watched Hei in ponder the pros and cons of going, and Izuku decided to use the one thing he is going to regret, but will be worth it. You could also get to see those old dusty albums. Said Izuku and just like a switch Hei in beamed, I'm going with you, said Hei in excitedly, as she could get the chance to see pictures of Izuku when he was a child, and then rush towards her room to get ready. Izuku couldn't help the sigh as he knew that his day will be filled with embarrassment, but at least she won't have to spend the night alone in bed. It was 10 minutes until she walked out, and Izuku couldn't help the whistle as she wore a blue long sleeve shirt and blue jeans. How do I look? Asked Hei in as she spinned around making a show in front of her boyfriend which showed boldness, absolutely sexy babe. Said Izuku much to her joy as she jumped into his arms as he spinned her around making sure to make her feel special. Izuku was standing in front of the apartment as he looked at the nervous Hei in. Just act normal around mom, I'm sure she will like you that I promise. Said Izuku as he pulled her into a small lip kiss. Izuku then pulled the key to the apartment as he opened the door removing the lock as he walked inside, and just like a predator, Inko Midoriya was seen crawling on the floor, much to Hei in surprise as she launched towards Izuku, pulling him into a bear hug, as she let out her famous Inko Midoriya tsunami tears. Welcome back home my baby boy, I was so worried about you, have you eaten? Before she could go into any further rant she was cut off by another female voice, Mom, I think Big Brother brought his girlfriend, was the voice of none other than Fubuki Midoriya, who had a teasing smirk and a gleaming eyes that displayed mischief as Inko Midoriya had turned slowly like a robot to see the guest. My god, is she my daughter-in-law? Said Inko happily as she covered her mouth, tears streaming down more, much to Hei in surprise she was pulled into a hug as well, well not the famous Mama Midoriya hug, but it was a very nice and comforting hug. Welcome to the Midoriya home, what is your name daughter? Asked Inko kindly as Hei In had to resist the urge to tear up at the way she was warmly welcomed inside the household. My name is Cha Hei In, it's nice to meet you, Mrs. Midoriya said Hei In as Inko smiled brightly. 
Since you're Izuku's girlfriend you should start calling me mom. Said Inko as Heian smiled slightly, her heart beating happily as she looked at her boyfriend, who was giving her a thumbs up and a smile. Thank you Mrs. Mom. Said Heian as she catched herself feeling the word mom to be quite foreign, but a very welcomed one. Now mom, please don't make my girlfriend wait outside. I don't want our neighbors to look at us. Said Izuku with a genuine smile as Inko nodded. I will be preparing dinner for all of us, make yourself at home my dear. Said Inko as she smiled at the blonde girl who had already started to shed a tear. Okay mom, I will have to show Hei in my room, and then we will come outside to help said Izuku, as he picked up the girl's bridal style and walked towards his room, much to Inko delight and Yubuki smirking look as she took pictures. Walking inside his room it was a far cry from back when he was an otaku who filled his room to the brim, with All Might merchandise and action figures. Now his room had a bed at the corner of the room which was smaller compared to Hei in bed. Next to the bed was a computer desk where the upper shelf contained a few books, but in the middle were some of his family pictures. There was his laptop which was shut down. Next to the computer desk there was another shelf which contained numerous books. Izuku then comfortably sat on the bedsheet as he gently placed Heian on his lap, as she wrapped her arms around his neck, her head was buried into his chest slightly sobbing, and he knew why, for the first time in years she was welcomed inside a home and was shown a motherly love, something she had never experienced. SHH, it's fine like I told you before, you're part of the family now and will always be part of the family. Said Izuku in a soothing voice as he watched as her sobbing lessened, reducing to sniffing noises before she calmed down completely. Izuku continued to run his fingers through her hair in a soothing manner, as she started taking calming breaths, as Izuku Mana's smell had done its job in calming her down. I am sorry I acted this w way. Said Hei in embarrassed that she broke out like that. Izuku smiled, why are you apologizing, it's fine to cry, and besides my mom could cry tsunami of tears that could flood the entire building, so I doubt anybody could contend with her in that department, I even thought she had a water quirk. Said Izuku as Hei and let out a chuckle, feeling herself more comfortable. Knock. Knock. Dinner's ready. Came the warm voice of Inko Midoriya as Izuku stood up, we're coming out mom. Said Izuku as he looked back at Hei in who steeled her nerves and grabbed his hands, as they together walked outside of the bedroom and went to the living room. Hei in saw a smiling Fubuki who gave her a friendly wave before she resumed texting on her phone, much to Inko's annoyance. Inko appearance remained the same, although she had the food on the table as she gestured for them to join them. The warm comforting smile found its place in Heian's face, is this what it means to be part of the family? Thought Heian as she looked at Izuku who smiled at her as she walked inside much more relaxed as she joined the small family to have a dinner that she will never forget for as long as she lives. Chapter 8. Job Change Quest. Izuku let out a sigh as werewolves cowered in fear as he used his quick speed to make quick work of all of them, as his daggers cut through three of the werewolves that attempted to attack him, as he took a deep inhale of oxygen, as he looked at his girlfriend cut through the werewolves like a pro, and smiled proudly. After he introduced her to his mom and sister two months ago she had become a member of the family, and had taken to spending a lot of time with him instead of at the gymnasium. His bedroom might have been small, but she liked it that way because she got to be much closer to him, although his mom had to get used to the idea that they shared the same bed together. The werewolf tried to surprise attack him, but he ducked under the punch, before he brought his dagger, activating his skill advanced dagger arts and vital strike, at the same time, allowing for three holes to appear on the werewolf body. This seems good. Used Izuku as he smiled. Alarm. You leveled up. Alarm. The player reached the required level. Izuku raised an eyebrow as he looked at the system required level. Thought Izuku as he kept watching as Hei and dispatched the last of the werewolves. Quest alarm. The job change quest has arrived. Quest alert. Will you accept the quest? Accept. Refuse. Job change. Questioned Izuku before he decided to think about it later as he walked with Hei and towards the boss room together as they stood in front of the door and gave a nod at each other before they kicked the door open, ready to exterminate the dungeon boss like the power couple they are. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Level. 40. Job. None fatigue. Zero. Title. Wolf Slayer. HP. 7229. MP. 638. Strength. 97. Vitality. 59. Agility. 97 Intelligence. 51. Sense. 81. Physical damage reduction. 20%. Active. Remaining points. 0. Skills. Passive. Unknown, Max. Muscularity LV.1. Advanced Dagger Arts LV.1. Active. Sprint LV.1. Bloodlust LV.1. Vital Strike LV.1. 
it was night and Izuku had decided to spend the night with Heian, as he was shirtless with Heian snuggling into his warm chest, inhaling his scent. Ever since she was welcomed in the Midoriya family, she became much bolder in her advances, as she felt much more comfortable than before when she was a shy girl, although she still blushed from time to time. Just like the chairman said over the course of six months they became hunters, dungeons became much more common, which include a lot of C-rank dungeons, and at this point with a heavy heart, their group was divided into two, as Hei In and Izuku teamed up together, and Jong In and Beat teamed up, although it didn't mean that they never participated into a dungeon the four of them together, but with their increase in their ranks and power the association thought it would be best if their skills were not wasted in clearing one low-rank dungeon. Heian honestly couldn't complain because she was able to have her alone time with Izuku, and thanks to that their relationship has grown stronger, that even Inko herself had pretty much given them her blessings, which meant a lot to her. What happened today, you got a little distracted in the werewolves extermination? Asked Heian concerned. The system had told me that there is a job change quest at this point, I might get the chance to promote myself to Shadow Monarch, said Izuku, as Heian let out a small sigh, as she hugged him tightly right after she was properly welcomed in the Midoriya household Izuku had decided to come out about the existence of the system, and his meeting with Ashborn, she was obviously surprised and a little afraid that the earth might be invaded but knowing this she didn't want to watch her boyfriend's back, while he fight alone against those threats she want to fight by his side till her last breath. It's where her resolve to become stronger had been born as she spent every day with Izuku cherishing their times together, while training her hardest to one day be able to accomplish her desires. She also felt happy that Izuku trusted her with such a secret, and if anything, it strengthened their relationship. See can I go with you? Asked Heian as she looked at her boyfriend in the eyes who just looked at her for a few seconds before he smiled, why do you want to go with me? Asked Izuku curiously as he watched Heian face shift to embarrassment as her face reddened before she twiddled with her fingers, but looking at her boyfriend's eyes, she steeled her nerves. I want you by my side until I draw my last breath. Said Heian with resolve and determination in her eyes as Izuku was taken aback by the proclamation before his expression softened. You can come with me, I've already decided to take you with me everywhere after all I trust you with my life Heian said Izuku as Heian smiled in relief and leaned to share passionate kiss with her boyfriend before she snuggled into his chest as Izuku big hands wrapped around her. The day was a sunny day usually kids his age would be at school, but Izuku hadn't been in school for a very long time, he only came to do exams, in which much to the chagrin of the male students and some of the teachers he had aced it, which he could thank his ability to increase his intelligence. Obviously the fangirls had been praising him in hopes to get his attention, luckily he had learned to be much more politer, since the association has been preparing them with eventual confrontation with the media and fans, after gates started increasing. Much to his annoyance the fangirls seemed to get some sort of boost in confidence, after having acknowledged them after months of ignoring or avoiding them, but he could only do this to get used to the eventual die-hard fans, something which all of them didn't look forward to even Beak himself, didn't look forward to it, having been at the receiving end of it, when his father was still an active pro. Hero. Glancing at Hei and he pulled the key of the job change quest, are you ready babe? Asked Izuku much to his surprise she seemed to be determined. I was born ready. Said Heian as Izuku smiled before a gate opened in front of them as he walked first followed behind him was Heian herself. The first thing they saw when they entered the job change quest dungeon was the large halls, it looks like the interior of a castle, said Heian, before a loud tapping noise could be heard and looking behind them, they saw a knight bringing his sword to his back in an attempt to decapitate the intruders. Luckily the knight's movement was slow as both were able to dodge, Heian clicked her tongue in annoyance, his movements are dull, and his attack don't have much force. He has no skill. Doesn't he know that the bigger the motion, the bigger the opening? Questioned Hei and as she pulled her sword in a decapitating motion, but to her utter surprise the knight head didn't separate instead it continued fighting. Izuku jumped behind the knight wrapped his arms around its neck before he applied force, resulting in its head to be crushed, and for good measures he ripped some of its armor around the neck. Alarm. You have slain a knight. He's not that strong. It's just his armor is too thick for my dagger and your sword to penetrate, unless you use your mana which could do the job, said Izuku as Hei and nodded her head. If the whole dungeon is going to be filled with those knights, then I'd rather not waste my mana unnecessarily, said Hei in as Izuku found it logical. This type of monster is weak against drawn out battles. Can you even call it a proper monster? Said Izuku before he pulled a torch from one of the hallways, and Hei in picked her own. It's a good thing I came with you. Said Hei and as she was relieved that she made the decision to join him in this quest, because she doubted that Izuku will be able to do it on his own. Yeah, I guess you're right because the system is forbidding me from using the potion and shop ability including status healing, said Izuku, as he looked as the blue screen popped in front of him. Alarm. You cannot leave this dungeon until you have cleared it. 
Alarm. In this area, your potion and shop ability is restricted. On level up, you do not receive status healing. This job change quest. We can't underestimate it, said Heian, making sure to remind Izuku that they were playing a dangerous game with unknown variables. Yeah, I'm fully aware that this job change quest doesn't take weeks to complete, said Izuku as Heian nodded her head. Loud footsteps could be heard from behind them, as marching troops of knights could be seen walking wielding weapons. Heian then placed her sword in the scabbard as she took a fight stance, her eyes glowing and her hands emitting golden aura. All we have to do is strike their neck where the defense is the weakest, said Hei and as Izuku nodded before both rushed with great speed towards the incoming horde of knights, as Izuku landed a powerful gut punch to one of the knight, resulting in its armor to cave in from the pressure, and the wind pressure resulted in the knight to fly landing towards two other knights. Hei and on the other hand had used her superior speed and enhanced strength to snap one of the knight's neck while giving it a good kick for measures, and knight tried to ambush her from behind, but she quickly retaliated as she slammed her elbow repeatedly in its face caving it in. Izuku jumped in the air as he landed a knee onto the face of a knight, shattering it before he jumped once more, wrapping his arm around one of the knight's neck, snapping its neck, and removing its head. Alarm. You have slain a knight. You have slain a knight. You have slain a knight. Betting on his knees he rummaged through the knight's possession to find decent items, there's a few that drop some decent items. Said Izuku as Hei and nodded her head as she also had a check on the knight's possession. Picking the leather pouch he was surprised by how much money it contained, it's an item that contains gold. 30,000 in fact. Said Izuku as Hei and threw some of her leather pouch to Izuku. Item. Leather pouch has been opened. You have received 30,000 gold. Total gold. 863,400 G. Suddenly Izuku's senses spiked as he brought his dagger stabbing the air taking Hei in off guard as smoke disappeared, revealing a knight using stealth skills to try and ambush them. What the? Those are the same skills as Mr. Teshik said Hei in as she watched as the knight fell to the ground dead. Alarm. You have slain a knight. Suddenly a ball of flames was launched in attempt to strike Izuku in the back, but reacting quickly he dodged as the flame curved past him, and looking behind, he saw a magician with robes wearing creature with no face whatsoever, and also holds a staff and a tome holstered to the hip. In addition to those, he has a winged pendant with blue gems pinned on the chest. A magician this time. Moreover, it uses blaze magic. Said Izuku as he grabbed his daggers and rushed towards the magician in an attempt to eliminate it, but an arrow rushed in an attempt to reduce his brains into the hallways, walls paint. Watch out Izukun there are knights with bows. Said Hei in as she jumped towards Izuku's back grabbing her sword, as she deflected the numerous arrows that were headed into the unguarded back of her boyfriend. Thanks babe. I now understand what they expect us to do, so far each of these monsters had their own weakness like strength for knights, sense for assassins, agility for archers and vitality for magicians, said Izuku as he evaluated each of the monsters weakness, as Heian seemed to nod having come to a similar conclusion. Although magicians will be such a massive pain, luckily he is only one person. Said Heian as she started pouring her mana into her sword, her eyes glowing much more determined to have her boyfriend's back all the way. Izuku glanced at Hei in for a second, observing that she was slightly tired from the whole ordeal, I will be taking over defeating the knight, since in terms of strength, I'm clearly stronger, and I will be taking to fighting the assassins, since they can't ambush me due to my heightened senses. Said Izuku as Hei in nodded her head. Just don't die on me. Said Hei in before she herself rushed towards her enemy, adding mana to her feet, giving her explosive speed as she grabbed her sword, decapitating the archers that dared to try and attack her beloved from behind, before a knight tried to swing his own sword at her, in which she slammed her left elbow in its face repeatedly, while her right hand was still swinging her sword. Around essentially crippling their forces. Izuku on the other hand had been jumping around punching the horde of knights caving their helmet to their armor, overall the knights didn't have much of a chance against him, there were obviously some of the assassins that tried to have their chance at assassinating him, but he is easily dispatched of them. The lone magician tried to attack the two power couple, but Izuku grabbed his dagger as he flung it towards the magician face stabbing it in the face, while an arrow found itself lodged in its brain, showing that Heian grabbed one of the bows and used it to crush its brain, if it were a human being, the boring and empty walls would have been painted with the color red. Fatigue. 34. It was the system's reminder that Izuku was getting exhausted, but luckily Heian's presence had helped his situation, or he would have been on the ground trying to catch his breath, as he checked on Heian, who was panting slightly, sweat poured down her brow, as she stabbed her sword at the head of one of the archers. Izuku walked towards her as he brought his arm around her shoulder, pulling her for comfort as she rested her head into his neck, inhaling his mana smell as she took a few breaths, finally regaining her breath, as Izuku pulled from his inventory a bottle of lukewarm water, as he passed to her, as she looked at him for a few seconds before she removed the cap, as she drank it without hesitation it was. 
Obviously warm but at this point she needed to stay hydrated. Glancing at Izuku she stopped drinking, wiping her mouth with her hands before she passed the bottle to Izuku, please drink. Said hey and it was obviously an order from her tone she didn't want him to neglect his own health for her sake, because there wouldn't be a point in being here if she is being a hindrance to him, and the last thing she wants is being a deadweight. Izuku smiled as he picked the bottle and started drinking the other half of the water as the system popped once more, registering everything. Item. Leather pouch has been opened. 20,000, gold. Water bottle filled with lukewarm water has been obtained. He let out a breath of relief as his dry throat has been hydrated as he sat down comfortable on the floor and pulled hay in on his lap as she rested her head into his chest, her eyes closed as she rested her aching muscle, knowing full well that they were approaching the boss chamber and she need to be ready. Were you trying to go on a suicide mission on your own said hey in as she opened one of her eyes glaring slightly at him, which made Izuku gulp slightly obviously nervous. Don't you dare do something as reckless like this ever again. Said hey and it was obvious to Izuku from her tone that she was worried and she had every right to feel that way. In this entire job change quest, there were several moments where arrows could have pierced his brain, his heart, his jugular, and there were moments that assassins could have successfully killed him, such thought brought slight tears in her eyes. I just don't want you to die, I still want to do a lot of things with you, so promise me to never go on this kind of dungeon clearing on your own, even though I know that the system is only trying to make you stronger, said Heian as Izuku smiled sincerely. I promise Heian. Said Izuku as Heian felt relief as she snuggled into his chest more wanting to prepare for their eventual battle against the dungeon boss. After both of them got some rest they stood up as they walked towards the boss chamber to see a large double door with a golden outline, and the handle was red. It was obvious from first sight that the boss chamber is much more extravagant than the hallways of the castle. It was obvious from Hei and Mana's smell, and Izuku senses that lying behind the door was an incredible enemy, something which Hei voices out, the amount of mana that is reeking out of this door is enormous, the boss of this room should at least be a rank at best. Said Hei in as Izuku placed his hand on the door before he pushed it open as smoke started reeking out, showing that the room hadn't been opened for ages, until the intensity of the boss mana rushed towards the two hunters. The power itself sent shivers into their spirit, yet they still stood unwavering, as the torches started to come to life, as flames appeared revealing the room interior which was the throne room as said throne was empty. The king's throne room? Questioned Izuku as Hei and cautiously darted her eyes at every single corner of the throne room, although she didn't need to locate the boss, as said boss stepped forward from the shadows of the throne room, his boots clicking every time his foot made contact with the stone floor. The boss was a large knight covered from head to toe in blood red armor with a Y-shaped hole built into his helmet. He also wore a tattered red cape, wielded a massive red sword that was equal to him in height, and had a long red hair-like ornament, extending out of the back of his helmet. Being in the presence of the elite knight brought fear into their hearts as Hay and hands were shaking, as even after resting her hand on her blade, she knew that the difference in their skills was extremely vast. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Level. 45. Job. None fatigue. 23. Idol. Wolf Slayer. HP. 5511 MP. 68790. Chapter 9. Blood Red Commander Igris. The knight was seen walking slowly as he stepped down from the throne stairs, his long sword was being dragged the whole way, as it made contact with the stairs of the throne spark was seen coming out of the blade. Any amateur hero hunter would have let his guard down, thinking that the blood red commander couldn't properly hold his sword due to its sheer size, that was equal to his height, and with the previous fodders that filled the hallways of the castle, whose sheer number was only a nuisance, but in skills they were weak, any rookie hunter would have undoubtedly got confident and assured of his victory but. This would be a fatal mistake. Luckily Izuku and Heian were experienced hunters, they knew that a monster with such powerful aura, who is said boss of dungeon should be strong, and just like they predicted the blood red knight rushed towards the two hunters with speed, as he held his sword from the ground, swinging it in a horizontal slash, attempting to remove the heads of the intruders, that dared to sully the throne room of his. Deceased king. Sadly for Igris he had underestimated the two hunters' speed, agility and reaction time, as they squatted on the floor, letting the blade run through the pillars of the throne room, destroying it, which showed the great power that the sword held. It cut the pillars like tofu what an insanely strong bastard Izuku thought, obviously alarmed and taken aback by the speed displayed by the leader of the knights. Taking the opportunity that the commander had his guard open, he brought his dagger as he tried to stab Igris in his left kidney, but the blade could only release sparks, as it connected with the red armor unable to penetrate its defenses. TSK. It's not penetrating. Thought Izuku as he clicked his tongue in annoyance. 
Igris was displeased as he brought the sword overhead as he attempted to cut Izuku in half, as he slammed the sword on the ground, creating a large smoke as the ground shattered beneath him, as a testament to his strength with Izuku jumping back. Heian had used her speed to appear behind Igris, her blade was brought in a decapitating motion ready to remove the head, as she poured a lot more mana than she usually did. The Blood Red Commander dismissed the girl's attempt to eliminate him, as he brought his large sword behind him, blocking the sword completely before he brought his right foot, slamming it into Hay in abdomen, sending her tumbling on the floor, as she vomited blood at the sheer intensity of the kick. Hay in. Shouted Izuku in worry as he watched his girlfriend close her eyes in frustration, knowing that the knight was chivalrous, which meant that he would never use his sword on her. Igris didn't give Izuku the chance to check on Hei in, as he rushed towards Izuku with great speed in an attempt to pierce the boy with his blade, but Izuku reacted quickly by bending his waist to the back, letting the sword continue and pierce through several pillars. Using speed he got behind and far away from Igris as he watched the crumbling pillars as he glanced towards Hei in, obviously frustration was evident on her face, please rest Hei in, if you want to join I won't stop you, but don't force yourself, rest a little, so you can prove that bastard how wrong he is to underestimate you said Izuku sending encouraging words to her which she nodded. Izuku then glared at Igris, the armor's speed reduction is only applied if your strength is below 80. Thought Izuku as he observed and analyzed the start of the fight so far. Igris lifted his head to look at Izuku, this guy's strength is definitely over 80. Its destructiveness is definitely higher than mine. Same for agility. And its armor can block my dagger, that means even its defense is higher. Is there even a way I can beat this? It's even stronger than I imagined thought Izuku as he gritted his teeth a little pissed to say the least. His dagger started to dematerialize knowing that a dagger fight was useless with its armor providing defense, I don't think I can win without a weapon, but. If I can't penetrate the armor, I can't deal damage anyway. Said Izuku as he slammed his fist into his other hand, cracking his knuckles, while giving his best impression of a menacing glare, this is the only way. Said Izuku. Igris tilted his head to the side, seeing as his opponent was disarmed before he grabbed his long sword, stabbing it next to him, he then grabbed the ornament that held his tattered red cape, before he removed it, allowing for the cape to fall to the ground, he then removed the dagger that was sheathed behind his back, as the two daggers fell to the ground with a thud, surprising both Izuku and Heian. Igris then started to clench his fist as Izuku grit his teeth shivori. Questioned Izuku as he looked at Igris, you're not taking me seriously. Said Izuku it was obviously a blow to his pride, but even he had to admit that his chances are much higher now, if his large threatening sword was out of the equation. Igris surprised Izuku by rushing towards him much faster than before, as he slammed his palm onto his chest, before he quickly grabbed Izuku by the back of his shirt, flinging him to the wall cracking the wall from the sheer force. Izuku didn't take into account that the long sword and the daggers must have weighed down on him, and by removing them, he had become even more dangerous. Izuku then brought his arm into an X shape, as Igris' fist slammed into his arms, his bone cracked as he was pushed inside the cracked wall, luckily Izuku was used to receiving punishments, as he used his speed to get away from the wall, as he watched the large debris that was created by the wall's destruction. I guarded that hit, but it feels like I still lost around 500 health. Izuku thought his face showed a pained look as his right arm showed a red bruise as it hung lowly, unable to move it. If I didn't have armor, then thought Izuku as he watched Igris walk through the debris his dark humanoid figure gave him an intimidating look, we won't come out alive if I keep taking direct hits. Thought Izuku as he glanced at Hei in who was trying to force herself off the ground, but the punch had obviously hit her hard making her quite disoriented. But still insanely strong even without its sword. Said Izuku as he glared at Igris who seemed to look down on him. How do I? Even put up a decent fight against this monster? Thought Izuku as he questioned what to do to deal with such a powerful threat. Rushing towards Igris his movement becomes much faster, even if I lose in strength, I still have speed. Shouted Izuku as to prove it he quickly activated one of his skill sprint as he zipped through the entire throne room, his figure blurring around. Alarm. Skill. Spring was activated. Movement speed will increase by 30%. Minus one mana will be consumed every minute. Izuku appeared in front of Igris as he landed a power abdomen punch, but Igris quickly retaliated by bringing his right elbow to the top of Izuku's head, thinking quickly he brought his left arm as he blocked the elbow attack as he pushed Igris' arm away, before the two fiercely started punching each other building momentum, as their hand movements became rapid that their hands seemed to multiply. Izuku cocked his left hand in an attempt to land a punch on the knight, but Igris was much quicker as he landed a right hook, then landed on Izuku's face, making him spin around his head, almost slamming into the concrete floor. Alarm. As your health has dropped below 30%. Skill. Perseverance will activate. Damage taken will be reduced by 50%. 
The system was obviously trying to help Izuku in the fight as he became relieved. If my defense increased due to my passive skill, I still have a chance, thought Izuku with hope in his eyes, as he quickly landed a left kick to Igris right side of his helmet while in the air. I can't give up. Izuku thought with determination in his eyes. Igris' wide eyes suddenly opened, taking Izuku off guard as he grabbed the offending leg with an iron grip, before he sent him flying towards the wall above the throne, as Izuku coughed blood slowly before he fell in the throne hunched forward and barely awake. Igris stood next to Izuku bringing his hand as it faintly glowed a blue hue, as the long sword that was stabbed far away undisturbed came flying back into his hands, bringing the sword down in an attempt to execute Izuku, but sadly for him, Heian decided she watched enough as her sword glowed much more brighter than before creating a long golden sword, as she blocked Igris' sword obviously the sheer hour behind Igris' sword had resulted in Heian to buckle as a small crater was formed beneath her. Izuku smiled seeing the perfect opening as he summoned his dagger Wii. Haven't lost yet shouted Izuku with a grin as he stabbed his dagger into Igris' left eye. Igris recoiled back from having his left eye stabbed, which Izuku capitalized on it, and like an American football player, he tackled the giant knight to the ground. Igris grabbed the handle of the dagger pulling it away as white substance was released from his wide eye, but sadly for him, Izuku was the owner of said dagger, I won't hand this item over to anyone else, except hey and thought Izuku, as he forced the dagger to dematerialize from Igris' hand, before materializing it in his own hand. Giving a battle cry he slammed the dagger in Igris' chin, but the armor was resistant, it's shallow. A bit more thought Izuku as he used the skill Vital Strike LV.14 times, as his dagger successfully breached the defenses of Igris' helmet, killing it as he fell to the ground lifelessly white substance pouring down his chin. Alarm. You have slain. Blood Red Commander Igris. Izuku turned around as he looked at the relieved and joyful look of Hei in, as they both hugged each other, thankful that this nightmare could be over, thanks babe. That was a close one said Izuku as he shuddered at the fact that he could have gotten killed back there if not for her interference. Alarm. You leveled up. You leveled up. Izuku then walked towards the fallen knight as he grabbed the items that were undoubtedly dropped by the knight 5 rewards. Questioned Izuku's surprise before he picked a rune stone, one which glowed faintly purple, and the other glowed golden. Red knight's helmet. Dominator's touch x2 leather pouch. Hearthstone have been obtained. Well that is odd, why would they give two of the same rune stone? questioned Hei in equally confused but Izuku slightly understood as the first run stone glowed purple, and the other glowed golden, as he threw the golden one towards Hei in which she easily grabbed. It's probably the system doing it, both of us fought the dungeon boss for them to replicate the rune stone, which means that it's powerful. Said Izuku as she understood. The item? Leather pouch has been opened. You have received 1,500,000 gold. The leather pouch exploded with gold, much to the astonishment of both Izuku and Heian, as the gold was added onto the system. Total gold. 3,115,629, g. Izuku then grabbed the green hearth stone, a hearth stone. Why were we given a hearth stone? Questioned Izuku as Heian realized what it meant as she looked nervously, this was definitely the boss room. Said Heian as she gulped when realization hit them. Shit, that means the quest is not over yet. Said Izuku and true enough multiple grey portals opened inside the dungeon static coursing through those gates, as multiple footsteps could be heard. The job change quest will begin. Shit. The job change quest is starting right now. I knew this wasn't going to be easy. Shouted Izuku furiously as Hei and became nervous. The longer you last, the more points you can collect that will place you into a higher tier job. 0 0 0 0 0 0. Good luck. 0 0 0 0 0 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 2. The foot landed on the concrete floor that was the throne room as a colossal knight, rivaling even the size of Igris himself, although from the looks of it they weren't strong, and with their state they could handle their numbers. The system will determine my job change quest by how long we could survive, said Izuku as Hei and nodded her head grabbing her sword, compared to Izuku she was well rested. She blitzes towards the horde of knights this time she managed to cut through them, as she had managed to regulate the amount of mana she had to exert in her sword to decapitate the enemy. Normally with her current speed the knight should have a hard time keeping up with her, but she had underestimated them, including the magician that seemed to be in the middle of them. Magician is using skill. Detection. Izuku seeing this decided to join the fray while warning Hei in, be careful those magician are using detection skill we can't take them off guard, I doubt even stealth could work on them, warned Izuku as Hei in heard and nodded her head sweat started to form on her forehead. A group of knights rushed behind Izuku in an attempt to kill him, but Izuku decided to use skill bloodlust, freezing them in their place as a blue hue surrounded them. Skill. Bloodlust was activated. The target stats will decrease by 50% for one minute. 
It was obvious that the more they defeated those knights the more came out of the portal. HP. 1036, 10278. Passive skill perseverance is activating. At this point the knights have flipped the table over the two exhausted hunters, as a knight successfully punched Hei in, sending her crashing into Izuku who slammed harshly to the ground, but even with their broken bones, they still fraud each remembering where they started and how they were put down. Workless nerd, you will never amount to anything. Came the voice of Katsuki Bakugu as he sent an explosion into Izuku's face and sent him on the ground. He please K Kakan S stop H hurting me. Cried Izuku as he laid on the ground, his knees to his chest and hands to his head, trying to protect himself as he peered through his arm to see Katsuki stop for a few seconds before his scowl came back full force. You brought this on yourself Deku, talking about becoming a hero without a quirk, don't make me laugh, your mere existence is an insult to my pride and honor, as a future number one pro hero, there is no way in hell they would pick you over me, quirkless loser. Shouted Katsuki as he lashed violently at Izuku. Why is a quirkless bitch like you attracting boys while they don't even spare us a glance? Came the voice of a female, her face blurry as she sneered at the 14 years old Hei in who was beaten on the ground. Her long beautiful blonde hair was disheveled. Another girl grabbed Hei in hair her foot slamming at Hei in back, it's probably that ugly blonde hair of yours, you seem to take great pride in it, obviously swaying it around trying to attract attention, you fucking attention whore. Said another female her eyes burned with jealousy as her hand morphed into a large scissors, her mouth twisting into a sadistic grin. Stu up. Shouted Hei in tears bursting out of her eyes as she watched her beautiful long hair reduced to nothing but a dust to the air, her hair was uneven as she was humiliated in the worst way possible. She watched as the eyes of the jealous female classmate twisted into satisfaction, and their mouth was quirked into a grin as they laughed as Hei in cried. Nobody interfered as they walked past the scene. Remembering those memories both felt renewed strength and determination, as they both gave a battle cry furiously striking the Horde of Night with much greater speed, but no matter how much they cut through them, they didn't suffer any loss in numbers. Question Directions. Daily Quest. Getting ready to become powerful. Goal. Push-ups. 0100. Perlups. 0100. Perlups. 0100. Squats. 0100. Running. 010 kilometers. Warning. Failing to complete this daily quest will bring a punishment associated with this quest. 8 seconds left. 7 seconds left. 6 seconds left. 5 seconds left. Izuku's mouth twisted into a grin, his eyes showing tenacity as he grabbed Heian's hand. 1 seconds left. 0 seconds left. The knight tried to slam his sword on the two hunters, Heian almost accepting her fate, but surprisingly she felt herself being transported somewhere else. Alarm. You failed to complete the daily quest. Alarm. You are being moved to the penalty zone. The sun hit both of the couple's faces as they opened their eyes with Hayin sitting properly, her hand touching the harsh sand, where are we? I thought we were in the dungeon. Questioned Hayin as she looked at Izuku who seemed to be grinning. It seems I had the devil's luck, currently we're in the penalty zone for the first time, because I didn't complete the daily quest, said Izuku as Hayin's eyes widened in surprise but in relief as well. HP. 93 10278. MP. 202, 850. Fatigue. 91. Izuku then decided to try and open the system shop, luckily it seemed that he could access it in the penalty zone, as he bought two of the highest grade potions, even though it took a lot out of his gold, but coming out alive was a blessing. Hey and drink this. Said Izuku as Hei and took the potion tiredly before she started drinking the potion, the liquid was dripping from her lips, while Izuku drank his own. Their fatigue is being restored. Their fatigue is being restored. Their fatigue is being restored. Izuku looked at Hei in who seemed to have been rejuvenated, although the wound still remained on the two of them. The potion only restores fatigue. Said Hei in as she looked at Izuku who just raised both his shoulders, showing that he didn't know much. That should be enough for us, but as for our wounds, we will have to find another method to deal with it. Said Izuku as Hei in sighed in relief before she looked around the desert. Speaking of a penalty zone that doesn't seem like a penalty, it pretty much saved our lives, said Hei in, suddenly the sand started to rise, showing three large centipedes and Hei in sweat dropped. Izuku looked at Hei in with a poker face, you had to jinx it, didn't you? Said Izuku although there was amusement in his voice which she caught on it, but she was obviously flustered sorry. Said Hei in before she looked at the three large centipedes they were obviously D-rank monsters at best. Izuku looked at Heian, and she looked at him before they both grinned as Izuku gripped his dagger, and Heian grabbed her sword before in an instant, the three mighty centipedes were taken down as more came out of the sand, as both engaged the monsters into a battle. Alarm. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. 
Remaining time. 4H0 min 0 sec. Chapter 10. Shadow Lord. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0H15 min 22 sec. The centipede jumped towards Izuku his maw opened ready to devour Izuku, but using Vital Strike LV.1, the upper body of the monster was destroyed, showing a hole where he strike. Vital Strike skill has leveled up. Standing in the middle of the dead centipedes he looked as Hei and flicked her sword, letting the purple substance that was the blood of the centipedes to leave the blade staining the sand as her sword was clean. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. You leveled up. As expected, penalty zones allow you to heal through leveling up. Said Izuku as he passed a potion with red liquid to Hei and who started drinking it, finding her health being restored. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Level 51. HP. 11,035. MP. 1022. Fatigue. Zero. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0 H3 min 19 sec. How much time do we have? Asked Hei and as she adjusted a raid costume as Izuku jumped down from one of the centipedes, three minutes before we return to the job change quest. We still have some time to prepare. Said Izuku as he observed Rasaka's fang as he shaked his head. Rasaka's fang isn't enough to pierce through the knight's defense. We'll have to do everything we can. We need stronger weapons. Said Izuku as he gave the command to open the store. Store. Guardian Saber 890,000 G. Oracle Sword 1,300,000 G. Stone Axe 1,800,000 G. Night Killer. 2,800,000 G. Excalibur. 3,000,000 G. 6,102,629. I. Cell. You have purchased Night Killer. Izuku held his hand as a blue electricity was formed revealing the dagger as he observed the masterpiece that was the dagger. Item. Night Killer. Item Class. D. Type. Dagger. Plus 75 attack. Effect. Knight Slayer. If used against an opponent with heavy armor, your attacks deal 25% additional damage. Izuku then opened the store once more as his eyes locked onto a large blade. You have purchased Excalibur. In his hand materialized a long golden sword as Izuku smiled before he looked at Hei In, who watched a mesmerizing side of the blade, before he gently handed it to Hei In, who grabbed it admiring the craftsmanship, and looked nervously at Izuku, is this really mine? Asked Hei in a little unsure as Izuku just gave her a peck on the lips, yes, it's yours, and compared to your previous sword, this one deals a lot of damage even more than by dagger, that should help you not waste mana on the knights that we will face. Said Izuku as Hei and beamed happily, this was the best gift she ever received from anyone. Item. Excalibur. Item class. A++. Type. Long sword. Plus 90 attack. Effect. Excalibur. A sword belonging to King Arthur Pendergon, a sword that grows along with the user as nothing can't be pierced by Excalibur, not even the thickest scale of a dragon. Excalibur is a sword that amplifies converging its user's mana into offensive power and releasing it. The more your will shine brighter the more Excalibur shine with brilliance. A blade worthy of a king. Izuku told Heian about the sword abilities, and Heian was shocked as she looked at the powerful blade that she held in her hands, her eyes watered at being trusted with such a powerful sword. Hey are you are really as sure that I deserve as something I like that? Asked Hei in as she sniffed while Izuku simply brought her into a hug. Yeah, after all you did say you want to be by my side until your last breath. The system is making me stronger, and at this point nobody will be able to contend with me, so helping my beautiful girlfriend get stronger to be able to fulfill her goal, would be the least I could do. Said Izuku as Hei and wiped her tears as she discarded the worn out sword and placed Excalibur to her waist proudly. You have purchased bandage. Izuku then tied his bandage around his hand to secure the night killer in his hand and not fall like the hearthstone. Izuku then picked up the rune stone as Hei and did the same. Rune stone. Dominator's touch. A skill can be obtained by breaking the rune. Let's see what skill we could receive from the rune stone, said Izuku as Hei and nodded her head in determination as the rune stone cracked under their grip both engulfed in a golden ore. Skill. Dominator's touch has been learned. Skill. Dominator's touch LV.1. Active skill. No mana required. You can control objects without touching them. Thud. Izuku looked to see Hei in using Dominator's touch to lift one of the arms of the centipede that was cut, although it fell quickly on the ground not being used to the skill. This is amazing, that's literally telekinesis, said Hei in as she looked at Izuku who was smiling. It seems so, although I don't think we'll be able to move objects that are too big. 
said Izuku as hey and nodded her head seeing as her mana hasn't depleted at all from using the skill. Penalty quest. Survive. Goal. Survive until the time runs out. Time required. 4 hours. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 4 sec. We're going to be sent back to the dungeon said Izuku as hey and grabbed his hand with a smile on her face and her other hand resting on Excalibur. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 3 sec. Hey and then leaned towards her boyfriend, connecting for a last passionate kiss before being sent back. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 2 sec. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 1 sec. Remaining time. 0 h 0 min 0 sec. The penalty quest is concluding. Teleporting back to the dungeon they were met with hundreds of knights standing in wait for the intruders, as they were shocked that their numbers increased within a few hours, but this time things were different as Hei and confidently gripped Excalibur, while Izuku gripped his knight killer dagger. It took an instant before suddenly 50 knights were cut as both Hei and Izuku showed no mercy to the knights, Hei and sword ran through the knights like a knife through butter, and Izuku daggers cut them into multiple pieces. Izuku stopped as he observed the current situation, I don't feel my level rising at all, even when I'm up against these numbers. Said Izuku as he expressed his discomfort towards the whole situation. Heian removed the head of the knight in a swift motion, as her eyes glowed yellow as her eyes darted until it landed on the two magicians. It's the five magicians in their midst, this has their name all over it, said Heian, as Izuku looked to see that the five magicians were definitely behind this, before realization hit him when he saw their numbers increasing summoning magic. Yelled Izuku as Hei and I widened before she grit her teeth as she zipped through the horde of knights, her hands clenching hard on Excalibur as she cut the magician into pieces, while Izuku did the same as he cut three of the knights' head, before he blowed the magician head off his body. You have slain a magician. The other three magicians seemed to be well guarded, but it didn't matter for both of them, as they both used a combination of their respective weapon, and the new skill dominator touch, to crush the helmet of the knights, seeing this the three remaining magicians worked together, as they placed their hands on the ground, creating a purple summoning circle, as the deceased knights piece were grouped together to create a large golem. But despite its huge size they had sacrificed speed for strength as Izuku and Hei in zipped past the golem and killed the three magicians, essentially putting an end to the golem who couldn't function without the magician summoning magic. Hei in wiped her mouth as she took a big inhale of oxygen, is it over? Asked Hei in as she looked at Izuku who looked at the blue screen. 04, 29, 16. All the monsters in the room have been slain, the quest will end now. Izuku grinned yes, the monsters have been slain. Currently the timer shows 4 hours 29 minutes and 16 seconds. Said Izuku as Hei and sighed in relief, but decided to keep their guard up, not wanting any more surprises. You will be able to choose a class based on the amount of points you have collected. It's over. I'll get a job now. Said Izuku as he relaxed his guard, and so did Hei in. The job will be granted after the player's actions have been analyzed. Wherever the player goes, the reaper follows. The player's path is littered with corpses, and the smell of blood. As the player possessed strength, he does not leave anything to his teammates, and overcomes everything with his own strength. Izuku raised an eyebrow. It says that I overcome everything with my own strength, and don't leave anything to others. Said Izuku confused as he looked at Hei and who put her finger to her chin. The system probably didn't expect me to be involved in the job change quest, said Hei in. Your desire for strength burns strong enough to call those who wander the valley of death, and the army of the dead who follows your command shall create a path where your thread will be the law and you would never need another's help again. What the? But I thought. Said Izuku as he looked at the blue screen announcing his job. Your job is necromancer. What job did it give you? Asked Heian, concerned by her boyfriend's reaction as he let out a sigh. My job is necromancer said Izuku as she looked at him in disbelief. Skills. Passive skills. Unknown, LV. Max, Perseverance LV.1, Advanced Dagger Arts LV.1. Active Skills. Spring LV.2, Bloodlust LV.1, Vital Strike LV.2. Dagger Throw LV.1, Stealth LV.1. Class Skills. Active Skills. Shadow Extraction LV.1, Save Shadow LV.1. Shit, as much as having those slaves might be appealing, but they can't grow stronger, and my stats will become useless, said Izuku a little displeased as his stats appeared. Stats. Strength. 132. Vitality. 91. Agility. 111. Intelligence. 70. Sense. 93. Alarm. Will you accept your job? Accept. Refuse. So I do have a choice to decline, hopefully the system takes into consideration my displeasure towards the job they picked for me. Said Izuku as Hei and looked at him curiously, don't you think you're rushing it, I doubt the system will try to screw you over so suddenly. Said Hei in, but Izuku shaked his head. 
I'll refuse. Said Izuku, but something unexpected happened. Necromancer is a hidden class. Do you still refuse? Hidden class? Questioned Izuku as he looked around him to see those magicians that had proven to be quite a nuisance, especially with their summoning magic. Come to think of it, don't you think that the magicians were basically advertising the job quest for you? Spoke Hei in as she looked at Izuku who seemed to nod, finding logic in her words. It's as if somebody wanted to show me a sample of the skill. Thought Izuku before he smirked slightly, I have fighting abilities as well. These magicians did not. If a magician that had close combat abilities and could create his own army. Said Izuku as Heian realized where this was going, he would be able to clear B or even higher ranked dungeons by Themself. Said Heian quite surprised and slightly impressed. In this game, your ability is dependent on skills, levels and stats. That means that the summons can also become stronger. This isn't solo leveling anymore. Said Izuku as Heian realized that the job is not simply with Izuku system level. Even those undead creatures could grow stronger, defying the rules put in place for necromancers. Your job has been chosen. Based on the amount of points you obtained, you will be given a chance to promote to a superior class. You have exceeded the expected playtime. Points will be added. You did not you say Hearthstone. Points will be added. Final health is above 50%. Points will be added. All enemies have been slain. Points will be added. The total points have exceeded the feat limit. The dark aura appeared as it rushed towards Izuku engulfing him in it, as he looked shocked before the system had decided on his final job. You will be promoted from Necromancer to Shadow Lord. Izuku whistled Shadow Lord, apparently the system gave me bonuses, said Izuku with a smile as Heian looked around her shuddering when she heard the scream of the corpses. You have learned a job exclusive skill. You have obtained bonus stats. You have obtained the title the one who overcame adversity. So does that mean you will summon the monsters from the dead? Asked Heian, she was obviously intrigued and excited. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. It seems so. Said Izuku with a slight grin as he walked towards the corpses of the deceased monster's knight. Please elect your command phrase for shadow extraction. Command phrase. Questioned Izuku before he took a thinking pose as Heian beamed, wanting to come up with a command phrase, how about we go for awaken or how about come forth that does sound much cooler, said Heian obviously her hopes were shattered by Izuku coming up with his own command phrase. Arise. Said Izuku with a poker face as Heian comically fell on the ground as she looked at Izuku dammit Izukun that was really lame. Said Heian, obviously displeased yet at the same time amused at Izuku inability to come up with a name. Suddenly the corpses of the knights emitted a dark aura that made Heian nervous lightly, as she watched as a black hand bursted out of the armor like a shadow, before each deceased knight came out all black, except for their eyes that were glowing blue. This is pretty cool. Said Izuku a little shocked at being able to summon for the first time his own shadow soldiers, he may not rival Ashborn, but that was a milestone in his road at surpassing the previous shadow monarch and becoming his own person. Skill. Shadow Extraction LV.1. Dob Specific Skill. No mana required. A shadow soldier is created from a body without life by taking out its mana. The chance of failure increases the higher the target stats are, and the more the time passed since the target's death. Shadows are able to be extracted. 30 30 Skill. Save Shadow LV.1. Dob Specific Skill. No mana required. You absorb created shadow soldiers and save them. Saved soldiers can be summoned and reabsorbed whenever and wherever the animator desires. Saved shadows. 020. Izuku then looked at his summons to see that they were all ranked as looking at the knights, they were obviously labeled as infantry by the system, as their rank was normal, while the magicians were elite. Hey Izukan shouldn't you make that Igris guy a shadow soldier said Hey in as Izuku eyes widen in realization, as he rushed towards the dead red knight followed by Hey in as they stood in front of the dead corpse of the red commander Igris. Shadow extraction can be used on this target. If you want to use shadow extraction again, you must send one or more shadow soldiers to the world of nothingness through extraction cancel. It tells me that I need to remove some of my already shadow soldiers to make room for him. Said Izuku as Hei and looked at the infantry and knew what was going to happen. I'll have to remove the weakest elven. Said Izuku as he bumped his fist to one of the infantries, I'm sorry. Even though I called you. Cancel extraction on 11 infantry units. Said Izuku as the 11 infantry soldiers were dissolved into nothing leaving no corpse behind. Heian then looked with excitement bubbling in her chest as Izuku stood in front of the deceased knight. Blood Red Commander Igris. If I have this guy as my servant. Arise. Said Izuku as Black Aura started to come out of the body of the deceased knight, but suddenly to his surprise the extraction failed. Extraction failed, why? Asked Izuku in shock as he looked as the blue system appeared in front of him stating his failure. You failed to extract the shadow. 
You still have two chances remaining. Why didn't it work? Asked Hay in concern as Izuku seemed to be frustrated, but answered, the extraction rate is based on the target stats and the time after death. This guy is a boss monster, and it's been four hours since its death, so of course it will be difficult. Said Izuku. Skill. Shadow Extraction LV.1. Dob Specific Skill. No mana required. A shadow soldier is created from a body without life by taking out its mana.The chance of failure increases the higher the target stats are and the more the time passed since the target's death. Shadows are able to be extracted. 1930s. Two chances remaining thought Izuku as he brought his palm in front of the dead dungeon boss and tried once more arise. Said Izuku as shadow started building up before vanishing once more as the extraction failed. You failed to extract the shadow. You still have one chance remaining. Izuku's eyes darted towards the throne, and his mind clicked knowing exactly what to say throne. Stop protecting the seat of somebody who has already left. And try protecting me, who is in front of you. Said Izuku bringing his palm once more arise. Commanded Izuku as powerful shadow aura engulfed the room much more than before as Izuku grinned. Blood red igris. Said Izuku before he shuddered no, that's too edgy. Simply igris. Said Izuku as he named the shadow of the deceased dungeon boss. You have upgraded the shadow. Shadow's level would be 7. Shadows higher than rank knight can be named. You are now Igris declared Izuku as the former dungeon boss was covered in all black, except his eyes being blue as he stood in front of his liege. Igris LV.7. Rank. Knight. You have successfully extracted the shadow. Status. Name. Izuku Midoriya. Level. 51. Job. Shadow Lord. Fatigue. 0. Idol. Wolf Slayer, plus one more. HP. 11,035. MP. 1022. Strength. 132. Vitality. 91. Agility. 111 Intelligence. 70. Sense. 93. Physical Damage Reduction. 46% Equipped. Remaining Points. 0. Skills. Passive Skills. Unknown, LV. Max, Perseverance LV.1, Advanced Dagger Arts LV.1. Active Skills. Spring LV.2, Bloodlust LV.1, Vital Strike LV.2. Dagger Throw LV.1, Stealth LV.1. Class Skills. Active Skills. Shadow Extraction LV.1, Save Shadow LV.1. Equipped Items. Red Knight's Helmets, Warden's N-E-C-K-L-A-C-E-A, High Knight's E-H-E-S-T-P-L-A-T-E-B, High Knight's G-A-U-N-T-L-E-T-B, High Magician's R-I-N-G-B, Assassin's B-O-O-T-S-E. Title. The One Who Overcame Adversary. The title given to those who overcame adversity heroically. Their stats increase proportionally to your missing health. 1% stat increased every 1% HP missing. Igris then kneeled in front of his liege, much to the fascination of Izuku and Heian, who watched the previous dungeon boss admitting to Izuku the other infantry, came kneeling in front of Izuku, following their commander Igris. Well I guess take good care of us. Said Izuku as he smiled, his eyes glowing blue as Heian's eyes glowed golden as well. Chapter 11. Secrets Out. Izuku let out a sigh of relief as he exited the dungeon as for Heian, she was inhaling the deep oxygen that was in the air, obviously the dungeon was quite stuffy to say the least, and with those monsters rampaging around there mana smell was something she had to be around for a very long time, luckily Izuku mana smell had helped balance it or she would have gotten dizzy. Looking at her attire it was obviously shredded in some parts, not much to reveal anything significant except some of her smooth skin. Izuku, noticing the cold weather, opened the shop and brought a large comfy coat. It wasn't expensive so his gold didn't suffer that much compared to when buying the Night Killer Dagger and Excalibur. Take it, the weather is cold out there, and you can't go around with your raid suit. Said Izuku as Hei and accepted the gesture as she wore the coat before buttoning covering her entire body. Thanks, Izukun. Said Hei in softly as Izuku smiled gently, and both decided to head home for a well-deserved sleep, as she went towards him wrapping her own arms around his waist, which Izuku answered by wrapping his arm around her shoulder. I'm so tired. Said Hei and as she let out a yawn, having calmed down, and the adrenaline had finally vanished, her fatigue was the only thing that she had suffered, and Izuku wasn't excluded from this as well, although thanks to the system he was in a much better state than Hei in. You can rest, you've done well babe. Said Izuku as he decided to lift her in a bridal style, her arm wrapped around his neck enjoying the closeness, she felt a sense of accomplishment as she looked at his eyes that showed love and pride. She felt happy that she had taken her first step into standing by his side and covering his back. Izuku on the other hand felt pride that she was able to fight by his side. 
Unlike him she didn't have a system that healed her and increased her stats to an unnatural degree, and like every gamer would say he was basically a living cheat code who leveled up without a limit to his powers. Hey In didn't have such privilege. It's maybe why he had bought Excalibur even though it pretty much ate away all his gold, but such sacrifices were worth it, because now she had a powerful sword that will grow stronger by her side, and with Dominator touch her potential increased, and he will continue helping her get stronger. At this point they already jumped towards A rank, and currently they were dancing near the S rank, so considering they had just recently became hunters, which is 6 months ago, it was pretty impressive for a bunch of teens to achieve so much in such a short time, but none was more impressive than Heian. Izuku might be the strongest out of the group of teens, but in term of natural human growth, Heian took the lead, although Izuku did give her the push necessary to achieve her potential. Izuku looked at Heian who was sleeping in his chest, her smile remained on her face as she snuggled into him more as Izuku couldn't help the small chuckle, as he looked at the blonde girl that was the love of his life. Stopping, he looked at the large apartment building in which he lived. Sweet home. Said Izuku as he walked towards the building. Knock. 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 Izuku, can I come in? Came the voice of Inko Midoriya as she looked at the watch to see that it was already 2pm, and let out a sigh. Ever since the sludge incident where All Might made his debut in Yusatafu, Izuku has been changing. If she is being honest she was quite happy about the changes since they were good ones, as Izuku had grown confident in himself, and had stopped excessively fanboying over All Might, including the heroes in general, but the one that made her both happy and ashamed, is that Izuku had dropped the idea of becoming a hero. She didn't really have anything against heroes in general, she as well had respect for those people who protect the country from the villains that are trying to disturb the peace, but Izuku over the years have grown delusional, wanting to become a hero without a quirk, she was ashamed that she didn't have faith in him, and had never supported his dream, but what can she do? She's a mother and wants to keep him pure for much longer. Can't she have the right to be selfish for once in her life? She knows more than anyone that despite what the media portrayed about heroes being invincible and being the undefeated champions who vanquish evil, they're not really invincible. If anything, the moment they became heroes they knew that there will be villains who won't hesitate to kill them, and all of those heroes had very powerful and versatile quirks, but Izuku had none at all to help him reach this goal. But not only that this society is full of biased people, and she doubted any hero school would be willing to accept him. At the end, Izuku was chasing an unreachable dream, and seeing him fill his head with delusion of grandeur, made her fear and question his sanity, and part of her blamed All Might for it, because he was the one who ignited the dream into Izuku, and once her son clutched onto that dream, simply having him give up on it was near impossible, and he became obsessed about becoming a hero just to be like All Might. At this point Izuku was walking a self-destructing path. She wanted her son to stop looking at the world from a narrow point of view, she wanted him to look at the bigger picture, while being quirkless will definitely cause him a lot of trouble in the long run, but not all people are quirkiest bastards, and he will undoubtedly find a place where he could excel at. It's like the old saying there are always more fish in the pond. Heroes aren't the only profitable profession out there in the world, and she could proudly say that her son is a very bright person, despite her questioning his sanity, so she didn't doubt his ability to get a good job out there. But. Those changes were unnatural and odd to her because one thing she knew about Izuku is that he is a very tenacious person, which is something he had inherited from his father, even with the discrimination he suffered, he kept moving forward, so for him to simply drop it like that, then something big must have happened. She wanted to know more than anyone what happened to him because his mental and physical growth was unnatural even by human standards, she had spied enough to know his training regiment, which while it's hard it wasn't enough to give him such an athletic body. She tried to question him, but it's when she learned that he had grown mentally as well. Izuku obviously lied to her face, but the way he did it shocked her, because he did it with a straight face not whittling with his fingers or sweating profusely, he was calm and collected. While she was hurt that he lied to her considering that she taught him better, she felt that she didn't deserve to know, because she never properly supported his dream. The changes continued to be more evident that slowly he started to skip school, and his taste of clothes changed dramatically, that he started to wear black attires. She had at one point thought that he gotten involved with the wrong group of teens, and is starting his rebellious stage which she was not ready to deal with, especially when seeing her best friend Mitsuki Bakugo mother and son relationship with Katsuki Bakugo. Thankfully, Izuku hadn't developed that rebellious stage or talked back to her like Katsuki did with his mother, but he was quite secretive about his activity when not attending school, but she had to admit his grades had increased making him the top of his class, and had maintained that record until now, so she couldn't force him to attend school, nor question his daily activity. 
The most scariest moment in her life was when Izuku had never returned home, she had remembered how she was camping in front of the apartment door, waiting for it to open, but it never did, and she as a mother got worried, and the first thing that came to her mind was to file a missing child report, but the police protocol required at least 48 hours before a missing child report could be filed so with a heavy heart she had to return home trying to sleep, but ended spending the whole night awake unable to even close her eyes. Luckily the next day she had managed to reach him, but after asking him again with a much forceful tone on the phone, he had given her a vague yet satisfying answer to his situation. She later learned that he had spent the day with her future daughter-in-law Hei in, which she honestly can proudly say that she loved the blonde girl because she was quite humble, respectful, and most importantly she was also quirkless, so she understood Izuku pain more than anyone, and in some way she was another daughter to her. The door slowly opened revealing a slightly tired Izuku, but he smiled at her good morning mom, is there something wrong? Ask Izuku as Inko shakes her head no, and it's currently 2pm, I've prepared breakfast, even though it's really late in the day to have breakfast. Said Inko as she smiled sadly at seeing her mature son. She knew that eventually he will leave the nest, and she can't coddle him anymore like she used to do. Okay, I will wake up Heian. Said Izuku with a smile, although when he closed the door, he frowned at seeing his mother's tired and sad reaction. Izuku ruffled his own hair before he decided to wake the sleeping girl, as he shook her gently, as her eyes opened slowly to see Izuku awake. It's 2 pm dear, wake up. Said Izuku as Heian's eyes opened quickly and properly stood up to see herself in her pajamas. Obviously Izuku had changed her so she would be able to sleep properly. It was embarrassing, but they had already seen each other in their underwear. We really did sleep that long. Said Hei in as she looked at Izuku and saw that he was bothered by something. What's bothering you Izuku-kun? Asked Hei in kindly as she sat on the bed and ushered him to do the same which he did. Izuku's face contorted with guilt, it's mom, she seems really tired and sad. Said Izuku as Hei in looked alarmed, I think my changes had affected her, and being unable to have answers, made her extremely worried and stressed, and she probably feel guilty for not being able to support my dream of becoming a hero. Said Izuku as Hei intense as she indeed seen how sad she looked whenever she saw Izuku. She is probably upset that you can't trust her with a secret, but what are you going to do? Asked Hei in concerned as Izuku let out a long sigh, I don't know but this needs to end now, I didn't become a hunter to see my mother self-destructing every passing day, said Izuku as Hei in was surprised by the implication, but her expression quickly softened. So you're going to tell her about us being hunters? Asked Hei in it wasn't a question as she knew that he's going to tell her. Yes, it's best to tell her sooner than later, and eventually our existence will be revealed in two to three months, depending if the gate got exposed to the public, it's best to prepare her both mentally and physically. Said Izuku as Hei and couldn't help but nod her head. Hei and then stood up, then let's tell her but this time you're not alone in this we're going to do it together. Said Hei and as Izuku smiled seeing his girlfriend supporting him and his decision. Izuku and Hei and had finished their breakfast before they decided to have their talk with Inko, who was currently cleaning the dishes. Mom, we need to talk about a few things. Said Izuku he was obviously nervous, but the talk needed to happen. Inko turned around to look at her son and Heian, before she nodded her head slowly, as they brought her to the sofa, as they sat down properly, as Izuku brought Inko into a hug which she hugged back, but had a confused look. What's wrong Izuku? Asked Inko, concerned by her son's behavior. I'm sorry mom, I have been so secretive about my activity that I didn't realize how much you were suffering from this, but I want to let you know that I didn't mean to hide anything from you, nor to not trust you, I just simply wanted to protect you. Said Izuku as Inko looked even more concerned. It's fine, I didn't really deserve to know, considering that I didn't support your long cherished dream of becoming a hero, I was extremely selfish only thinking about myself, so you had all right to not trust me. Said Inko sadly, but she was only hugged more by Izuku and Heian as well. The reason why I never told you about my activity is because. Said Izuku as he took a deep breath ready to let it out. We're working with the higher ups in the government, specifically under the chairman of the Hero Association Gokuni. Said Izuku revealing his secret as Inko's eyes widened in disbelief as she looked at her son and Hei in. Why are Jay joking are right? Asked Inko nervously, unable to believe that her baby boy is working under such a hotshot, but Izuku remained serious, showing that he was indeed telling the truth. Izuku pulled out his phone, opening it to the gallery image, and showed a picture of Izuku and his friends, along with the chairman, Wu Jinchul and Kang Teshik. SOI it's T true. B but why? Asked Inko unable to ask the right question as Izuku let out a sigh, this is a long story mom, but it all started on the day of the sludge villain incident, I was attacked by the sludge villain, but luckily All Might saved me. Being a massive fanboy and seeing my idol in the flesh was an overwhelming experience, and I decided to ask him the question that I've wanted answered for years. 
said Izuku and Inko well surprised that her son met All Might, but she flinched when hearing Izuku ask the question, knowing exactly what the answer would have been. I asked him if I could become a hero despite being quirkless. He obviously rejected my dream in a much nicer way as he told me that my dream was unrealistic and that I should become a police officer or a firefighter if I wanted to save others. Said Izuku as Inko's eyes teared up realizing how much pain he had suffered that day as she gripped his shirt tightly. Izuku then halted for a second before he continued, being rejected by my idol, dug deeper than any insults thrown at me. It didn't help that Bakugo had told me that day to take a swine dive off the roof of the building and hope for a quirk in my next life. Said Izuku as Inko's heart shattered as she bursted into tears while Hei and winced and Izuku looked away in shame. It also didn't help that the setting that I was in was a roof of a building, but I knew that suicide wasn't the answer, and deep down I thought about Yuen Fubuki, so I chose to walk out of the roof and return with a shattered dream, but. Izuku said as he halted at the end as he watched his mother hug him tightly sobbing into his shirt as she listened to him. But when I opened the door of the roof I was thrusted inside a purple gate. I don't remember what happened aside from waking up in the hospital room, and sitting in front of me was the chief inspector of the Japanese Hero Association surveillance team Mr. Jinchil. Said Izuku, hiding his meeting with the Shadow Monarch to not freak her out as Inko looked worried when the mention of the Purple Gate and his first meeting with one of the government officials. Long story short I was told that the gate I was dragged into led to a dungeon which is filled with monsters, and in order to close the gate killing the dungeon boss is necessary, but there was a trick only quirkless and people with weak quirks could enter the gates. Said Izuku as Inko got extremely alarmed. But there was also something else those who survived the gate came out with powers that are not quirks right now the unofficial name given to this power is mana, and Chairman Go Gunny wanted to create a special task force that clear those dungeons, because if not clear it after 5 days the gate will open allowing the monsters trapped inside to come out and rampage around Japan, and they are all capable of destroying a city by themselves. Said Izuku as Inko's eyes widened as she received her answer to why Izuku was growing so rapidly, and how he sometimes performed feats that are impossible for a quirkless to do. So, you accepted. Said Inko finding irony in the situation as Izuku dropped being a hero, but became another type of hero who kills monsters to protect Japan, and people are unaware of it. Yes, I accepted the job because I wanted to serve my country in some way. I just had to wait a month before we were called to receive training for two months, before we were allowed to start clearing dungeons which we started from the lowest rank gate, which is E to the highest being B rank gate, but since dungeons are relatively new their numbers are really small, that's why the government was able to hide its existence even pro heroes like All Might is ignorant about the existence of the gates, said Izuku, as Inko sat there wrapping her mind around the whole thing. Heian then decided to join the conversation, me and Izukun met at the bus that was supposed to take us to the gymnasium, we were obviously separated into groups, as the chairman wanted to single out those with ill intention, so it was me, Izukun, Choi Jong in and B Kyun Ho. All of us were quirkless, so it was easy for us to become friends, and the association give us a large dorm inside the gymnasium to live in if we wanted to move in and to also train. Said Heian as Inko felt relieved to know that Izuku was spending his night in a safe place. I'm glad to know that you were at least protected, but I'm still not happy that you had to already kill at your age even if they were not human, but I understand. Said Inko a little sad but happy to know that Izuku had met good people who shared and understood his pain and is able to follow his own path. Izuku then pulled a credit card as he handed it to Inko, who looked at it confused. Being a hunter that works under the chairman and due to the high risk of our profession, we were paid handsomely by the Hero Association, my first salary being 5 million yen, and with the dungeon's rank increasing our salary continued to grow. Said Izuku with a smile as he watched Inko choke on her saliva when she heard the large salary that her son received, as she looked at both Izuku and Heian, with admiration for being quite successful in their age. I couldn't reveal to you at the time that I was receiving such a large sum of money, because it would have left more questions than answers, and you might have come up to conclusions like the time when you thought I was becoming a delinquent for wearing black outfit. Said Izuku as he chuckled along with Hei and managing to lighten the mood in the room. Izuku then took a serious expression as Inko looked slightly nervous by the change of expression Mom, I need you to stop your extra shift, it would be even better if you retired and took actual care of your health, I have enough money to have us live comfortably for many years to come, and I only spend my money in quirkless charity and orphanage, which didn't make a dent in my bank account said. Izuku as Inko became surprised by Izuku demand, but when hearing the insane salary that her son received, she felt compelled to finally retire from her job as a nurse in a hospital and start taking care of herself and most importantly spend time with her children and best friend Mitsuki. Okay son. I will be resigning from my job tomorrow. Said Inko as both teens smiled before they kissed Inko in both her cheeks. Thanks mom. Said Izuku as Inko nodded.
Inko then tried to hand back the credit card, but Izuku pushed her hand back gently. This is your credit card mom, I've created two other accounts one with my name, the second one in your name, and the last one in Fubuki name said Izuku, as Inko looked shocked. Inside your credit card is 1 million yen and Fubuki credit card have 250k yen inside of it, I will keep adding money on both accounts when they decrease, but consider this one for entertainment purposes, my account will be used to buy the expensive things like the two-story house that I intend to have us all move in, it won't be big, but not small either, and I will be buying you a car of your choice. Along with paying Fubuki tuition. Said Izuku as Inko freaked out when she heard that the small credit card contained 1 million yen inside of it, but seeing the reassuring look on both Izuku and Hei in face, she decided to accept it with gratitude in her eyes. Thank you son, but just please be careful you too. Said Inko as both hugged the single mother promising to be careful, and Inko had never felt so much gratitude in her life for raising such a kind-hearted son, and for having such a kind daughter-in-law and Fubuki was no exception, because she is going to be a very strong hero one day, and this time she is going to support her. But Inko knew very well that the gates won't be secret for long, and her son and his friends will be forced into the limelight to maintain and ease the concern that will undoubtedly be created by the reveal of a gate that lead to a dungeon full of monsters, with the sole purpose of coming out of the gate to cause havoc. Not only that the rift between the hero society and hunter society will increase, but this could very well be the end of the hero era and the start of the hunter era. She could only hope that the two professions won't clash against each other, and that balance could be maintained, or a great global conflict could start with the worst case scenario being a great war. Chapter 12. Family Dinner. German Go Gunny liked to say that he was a very calm and honest person, rarely anything could get under his skin, as he always kept that smile. Maybe that was why he was feared, respected and most importantly hated by a lot of individuals. Feared because Goguni unlike most of the other higher-ups, had power to back up his claim, and while he was past his prime, his power was already debated to be on par, if not have already surpassed All Might, but rarely anybody saw his power, because he couldn't afford to worsen his already declining health. But one of his qualities that made him notoriously feared was his political skills of course with age comes wisdom and experience, so he was rarely surprised by anything and rarely angered, which is whenever a council meeting were to happen, he was always the calmest as he watched as all the competitors tear into each other like a bunch of immature children and make mistakes which he would then swoop and capitalizing on those mistakes to turn this meeting into his favor. So it was no surprise that Go Gunny was respected by many as he was viewed as the father of Japan, simply because he held society with his own two hands and stopped the other members of the Hero Commission from overstepping their boundaries, after all certain individuals in the Hero Commission were notoriously known for biting more than they could chew, which ended up with tragic incidents that they end up covering it up like the cowards they are. But despite those redeeming qualities he was quite hated by a lot of his peers, which included the Madam President, who firmly believed in maintaining the hero society and the status quo, which meant keeping the facade up, but Go Gunny being the political beast he was made any of her plans be halted, and in some cases stopped completely. One of his achievements was stopping her from falsely arresting Lady Nagant, a pro-hero who was secretly a child soldier groomed by the previous president of Hero Commission, and her to do their dirty work which include assassination. Obviously Lady Nagant had finally decided to bear her fangs on her master, as she killed him in self-defense, once she realized that he was planning on killing her, after starting to show signs of defiance. Though Gunny obviously swooped in and stopped any of her plans to have the ungrateful child locked in Tartarus in the lowest level, and then decided to take the traumatized pro-hero in his protection, and later she became one of his loyal and honest employee, who he had given her reign to choose what she wanted to do with her life, and she chose to become his secretary, in order to help him manage his workload and prevent him from overworking himself, but even then she still continued her training, and in some cases she performed assassination missions, since she became quite desensitized to it, but she rarely partook in it. Though Gunny was sitting in his office reviewing the files that were on his desk, as he had a thoughtful look on his aged face, before he let out a sigh. I'm not getting any younger, am I? Asked Gunny as he spun around his chair and rested his head on the leather and comfy chair. Maybe you should rest more sir, and rely more on us to help you in these difficult times. Came a female voice as Gunny smiled as he looked to see a tall curvy woman with dark blue and pink two-tone hair and angled eyebrows. She wore light boots, a dark, sleeveless dress and a metallic utility belt in which she stores bullets in. Gunny obviously knew she was in his office the whole time after all he was not the chairman for show, even if he is not getting any younger. Hello Kaina, it seems you have returned from Tokyo. How has everything been going there for you? Asked Gunny as he looked at the child that he saved from the clutches of those power-hungry bastards. 
Ainitsutsumi looked at the man she greatly respected and shakes her head. I would have liked to come up with good news, but the gate situation is getting much more regular especially in Tokyo, considering it's a large city. Heroes and civilian alike have already caught on to the existence of the gates, and we barely managed to get a cover story for it, but at this point it won't last long before they know what's behind those gates. Said Kaina it was obvious that the situation had been quite big even for her, as she had gone many nights without sleep to ensure that they're prepared for a possible backlash. Bunny let out a sigh as he turned his chair around to look at the large flag of Japan that was on the wall behind him. It's fine Kaina, you've done more than enough, we're already prepared so rest and enjoy your life unlike this old man you're still young, so don't waste it. Said Gunny as he turned once more to look at the girl who smiled sadly. Thank you sir. Said Kaina as she bowed her head before she raised it, how are those teens doing? Asked Kaina curiously as Gunny slightly chuckled. They've been growing every passing day including Izuku Midoriya and Cha Hei In, who are already A plus rank hunters at this point, by the time of the reveal they will be already S rank hunters. Said Gunny as Kaina looked quite surprised and impressed. The power to grow stronger each passing fight, I could see why he would be already an A rank, but the girl Cha Hei In seems to be also quite the prodigy if she is able to somewhat keep up with him. Said Kaino obviously praising the two children. Bunny smiled well those two are already engaged, and Izuku seems to help her in that regard, for instance he gave her a very impressive and powerful sword called Excalibur, he had obviously given her a few tips then and there, but mostly it was her efforts that got her so far. Said Gunny as Kaina smiled. He is a very good fiancé, he gave her the push that she needed and let her continue herself, I'm sure that it done wonders for her confidence and gave her a sense of pride in her accomplishment, said Kaina smiling at seeing the mutual trust that was shown by the two teenage couples. Kaina then took a serious expression, but. Do you think they're ready for the burden of being placed in the limelight? Even then what about their families? Asked Kaina she was obviously concerned as Gunny let out a sigh. A month ago, Izuku had finally decided to tell his mother and sister about his current situation, and to be honest, I couldn't blame him for doing it, apparently his mother had grown quite concerned about his activities that her health started to deteriorate slowly out of concern, he had told me that his mother has a fragile heart and is quite an emotional person. Said Gunny as Kaina flinched slightly before Gunny let out a sigh, she was obviously not happy that her son was involved in this line of work, but knowing that her son had another source of power, had somewhat eased her worries, and in some way she felt regret for not being able to support his dream of becoming a hero. Said Gunny as Kaina nodded, feeling bad for the single mother. Bunny then smiled luckily the reveal had managed to help the family take their first step in healing properly with Izuku's salary, he had his mother retire from her work as a nurse, and he and Heian have bought a nice two-story house in the middle class area, which also happened to be near one of his mother's best friends. He had also opened two other bank accounts with one of them being under his mother name, and the second one being in his sister name, which he put enough money for them to buy what they want, leaving only his own bank account for his sister tuition, anything house related, Kari CT. Said Gunny quite proud of the boy for managing his money quite properly and for being quite selfless. So he basically became the man of the house. Said Kaina, seeing why Gunny had taken a great liking to Izuku including the other teens. Joy jong -in has also told them after he learned that Izuku had already come out to his mother and sister, his grandparents were quite understanding folks and were quite overjoyed that their grandson was becoming independent and learning that he now possessed another source of power, had put their heart at ease, knowing that he could defend himself. Said Gunny remembering the relieved look of the redeed face when his grandparents had supported him. Lee Kyun Ho was a little hesitant at first, but with his friend's support, he was able to come out about his secret to his father, who was a former pro hero who went by the name Beast Arm Elfman. Said Gunny as he watched the shocked expression on Kaina's face. Wait, you mean the former number 5 pro hero? Said Kaina a little excited to say the least, remembering the man's debut, but also his retirement that devastated a lot of his fans. Yeah, it's a shame he retired when he was still in his prime. Said Gunny as he shaked his head in sadness while Kaina frowned. He had retired because with a year going by the hero society became corrupted and rookie heroes had started to give good heroes like him a bad name and it didn't help that his wife Evergreen Beak was presumed dead. Said Kaina balled her fist in frustration before she calmed down. But that aside, how did he react? Asked Kaina curiously as Gunny had an amused smile, you should know by now the kind of man he is. He obviously called his son a real man before he proceeded to give him a nudie, but this talk did help Yunho's self-esteem greatly, after knowing this his father is proud of him for taking his first step in forging his own path and for surrounding himself with loyal friends. Said Gunny chuckled slightly as Kaina smiled. Kaina then started to turn around to leave, I guess I was wrong about them, you've always had a good eye that saw what others couldn't see, have a good day sir. 
said Kaina as the man smiled seeing as the girl left his office before he stood up himself stretching his aching muscles, before he himself decided to call it a day. They may be stronger now, but they're still young and are starting to enjoy their life that was robbed from them, said Gunny before he let out a sigh. I feel bad that with the reveal of those gate, they will be forced in the limelight, but I'm sure they will get used to it after all, they're the future of Japan. Said Gunny before he shut the light, deciding to return home to his wife. Izuku and Heian could be seen wearing an apron as they both cooked together with a smile on their faces. Sitting on the dining table was Inko who was watching the scene with a bright smile on her face, occasionally taking pictures to add it to the dusty album book. Yubuki on the other hand was lounging on the much larger and comfy sofa, as she had the Samsung LED TV opened on a drama movie completely immersed in it. Much to Hei in amusement the movie was about the story of a king. Inner is ready. Said both Izuku and Hei in together as they brought the food on the dining table compared to before, when they barely ate anything other than katsudon and other non-expensive meal this time, they were able to afford the expensive cuisines, although the Midoriya family were not really into buying expensive cuisines like all other millionaires, but they did enjoy the variety of foods. They were able to afford without having to worry about not having enough money. Yubuki jumped from the couch as she walked excitedly to the dining table, having already had a taste of Izuku and Hei in cooking, and she loved it, not that Inko's cooking was bad, but having to experience other varieties of foods especially other Asian culture cuisines, was a mind-blowing experience. Korean. Questioned Inko with a surprised look as she tasted the soup in the bowl as Hei smiled, that's the classic Korean bibimbap said Hei as she wiped her wet hands on her apron, before she took a seat next to Izuku, as they looked at the red face of Yubuki, as she continuously drank water. Izuku let out a small chuckle at seeing his sister, that spicy kimchi stew sometimes called kimchichigi, I took into consideration that you enjoy the spicy cuisines. Said Izuku with an amused smile as he saw his younger sister enjoying her dish. Thanks big brother Izuku and big sister Heian. Said Fubuki quite grateful for her brother and sister figure for everything they've done for them. It's fine. Said Heian smiling as she started to eat as well, and Inko was finally enjoying her retirement as Izuku watched his mother, who had started to lose weight over the month her face had started to gain its healthy colors, as she no longer felt stress, and started doing the things that she previously couldn't do which is shopping, hanging out with her high school friends. Yubuki was also able to enjoy a comfortable and stable life, as she is able to now afford most things she wasn't able to afford, not that she abused her brother trust, by emptying her bank account money in a matter of weeks, because just like her brother, her mother and her sister-in-law, she had learned the value of money, so she as well used her allowance wisely and on things that she intended to use. Izuku and Hei in relationship had progressed quite rapidly, and now they have already discussed the idea of getting engaged together, and with Inko and Fubuki blessing the two now sported an engagement ring on their finger, and they couldn't be any more happier than this all they could do now was patiently wait until they could properly get married, but they preferred it when they're much older and hunters are globally recognized by the public. So how is work for the two of you? Asked Inko as despite the fact that hunters are paid handsomely, she would rather both their safety over money, but she had to trust them both to take care of themselves. Heian pulled her fork back as she pondered slightly, it's fine so far there is nothing unusual, and at this point, they're trusting us to enter dungeons without Mr. Teshik, since we've already surpassed him. Said Heian as Izuku decided to continue in her place, we've already been divided into two groups with me and Heian teaming up, and Zhang In and Yunho teamed up as well, since gates became much more common, but whenever the gate rank is higher, we regroup once more to clear the dungeon. Said Izuku as Inko nodded her head in relief. You should consider inviting them for dinner. Said Inko with a smile, wanting to properly meet her son's friends. We've already planned to do that actually. Said Heian as she then looked at Izuku who nodded his head, Yunho was the one who suggested that we do something like that, since it will be difficult to have a normal teenage life, after our status is revealed to the public. Said Izuku as he let out a sigh. Yubuki gave a mischievous grin as she leaned to the table yeah, and I bet you in the first week both of you will be called power couple, I wish you luck with those delusional rabid fangirls at Eldera. Said Fubuki with a grin although shivered when she saw the look on Heian's face. May those bitches rest in hell. Thought Fubuki, having watched enough drama movies to know that Heian will probably kill those girls, before they could make contact with Izuku. Izuku looked at his sister with a raised eyebrow, I only tolerated them because we're expected as well to deal with this kind of stuff, but if anything I'd rather avoid them altogether, but I was told use this as a real life situation, and not just brush away people, because it could cause a lot of problems, said Izuku obviously frustrated as Inko chuckled having already seen her son being popular. Among women he was definitely like his father in that regard. 
yeah, I guess I'll have to also get ready to have reporters stalking our house, said Inko with an amused smile. Well Fubuki shivered having seen enough to know how paparazzi conducted their business, and they're like the fangirl's persistent and overly annoying bugs. Heian chuckled when she saw Fubuki going through crazy scenarios in her head. Don't worry about that, Chairman Gunny has already decided to have at least bodyguards around to ensure that they don't get way over their heads and storm inside the house. Said Hey in while Izuku slightly frowned at the idea that someone could try and harm his family, made his blood boil which was noticed by Hey in who grabbed his hands in a soothing manner, which managed to make him smile. Standing up they both picked the dirty dishes in order to clean Izuku, Hey in please let me clean the plates. Said Inko as they were slightly hesitant before they nodded, knowing that Inko wanted to contribute and not feel like she is being a burden to them. Okay mom, if you need help tell us. Said Izuku as Inko nodded with a smile as she tied her own apron and started to clean the dishes. Just sleep you too, you've deserved that much. Said Inko as they nodded their heads before they walked towards their room. Opening it revealed a very spacious room which had a king-size bed. In front of the bed was a LED TV, and on the right side was a window which was covered by blinds, but in front of the window was two sofa chairs. Izuku and Heian sat comfortably in the bed they shared together before they closed the light of the room, with the only source of light being the moon, as the two couples hugged each other and shared one passionate kiss with the moon reflecting it on the ground. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.